Hello, my name is Elizabeth Nelson and welcome to Behind the Curtain. I'm the Executive Artistic Director of First City Players, but most recently it was my joy to be the director of our most recent production, The Last Five Years, a short musical by uh, Jason Robert Brown. And with me is Kyle G. Bailey, who portrayed uh, the character of Jamie Wellerstein in the show. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's kind of fun to uh, be able to revisit what that was all about. The, um, what felt like a real flurry there at the end, sort of this weird push to get it done. Yeah, it felt like for a while it wouldn't end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it did feel like it. was supposed to be the fall musical, and here we are in, in February. Right. Yeah, it, in, the, in the world of COVID, doing theater is um, almost an impossible task. And as you know, because you have a lot of friends who are in the industry, um, there's not been a lot of work <laughs> for professional actors, professional directors, uh, anything, because the whole nature of doing theater is all about telling stories and being intimate and um, getting a lot of people into in one close, space. Yeah. yeah, and it's really not recommended to be doing that right now. No. So last fall, um, Amanda Glanzer, who is our um, communications and development director at First City Players, said, hey, do you know the show The Last Five Years? And I said, no. And she said, you should listen to it. And I did. And I said, wow, that would be a perfect COVID show, wouldn't it? And we talked about having auditions and all of the things that you could, you could do to make a show happen. And then I said COVID already, right? Yeah. So, you know, it's a show about a couple. And there's going to be times when they're going to have to have intimacy on stage. And it felt really uncomfortable to have people who weren't already in a social bubble performing a show. So and after thinking for, oh, about five seconds, we looked at each other and said, what if we asked Kyle G. Bailey and Jillian Pollock if they would be interested in doing the show, contacted you guys, and you were both, yes. Really quick. Yeah, I remember the email. And it was, do we, are we interested in doing a smaller show since we're in each other's bubble? Uh, last five years came up and I had sung some of the songs before from when I was getting my degree. So I was really excited because they're like rangy stuff. There's like fun stuff as a singer. It, it, it's stuff it's, you got to kind of wake up for. You gotta, yeah. Oh, no, it's not, None of it is easy. It, I mean, it doesn't sound complicated when you listen to it. Right. It sounds pretty, you know, like poppy and kind of straightforward. And, yeah, but it is. But not. it's all over the place. There's musically. It has so many different styles that are part of what it is. Right. But then, as you said, it's really rangy. And for people who don't know what that means, do you want to explain oh, sure. what just, rangy? Yeah, it was like there's stuff that's like high up. And as a vocalist, that's fun for me as a challenge to like right. you know i love like you know singing you love being able to take it way up there <laughs> it's a fun a... thing as a guy you're like oh there's a high part you know as a male vocalist you're like oh fun i want to sing it and yeah we start to take the next step together found an apartment on 73rd the atlantic monthly's print my first chapter two thousand bucks without rewriting one word I left Columbia and I don't regret it. I wrote a book and Sonny made a Reddit. My heart's been stolen, my ego's swollen. I just keep growing on. Um, that was really fun. It was something I wouldn't have considered because, uh, you know, we're just in the middle of COVID and. Next thing when that show came up was like, well, actually, that would be great. And then there was the question of who would we get to play it? Right. To uh, play for the, the pit. The, the pit. Play for, music to, for the music. And the show can be and often is done with just a piano. Mm. But it was originally written for a keyboard, two cellos. It's such an interesting score. Yeah. Uh, um, a guitar mm -hmm. and a violin. That was the original... Um, uh, orchestration for this show and I've never seen that particular mix for any other musical <laughs> I mean just just an odd mix of them and so we started talking about who we could bring in to play and uh, 
called Chaz Gist, who is a, oh, bass, that's the other yeah, one, a bass yeah, player, yeah. who is a local bass player, and he got excited about being part of the project. And he put together, he put together a, a band of four people, a pit orchestra of four people, who played instrumentally what? There was percussion, two keyboards, a cello, a bass, an electric bass, a mandolin, and a flute. Right. So he had the flute take over the violin part, which was gorgeous. And there were times that uh, Chaz, who played both, uh, played all three, the upright bass, the electric bass, and the mandolin in one song in your shmuel, mm. he was at one point going from electric bass, keeping whatever note he had to be going on the electric bass going, grabbing the mandolin from the stool next to him and switching over and playing the right. one string on the mandolin. And then he'd do that in reverse. It was really fascinating right. to watch. Well, that was when it was starting to get exciting was when Chaz was going to be the music director, mm -hmm. I guess. So he was responsible for finding everyone and found a great group. And then, of course, Jillian Pollock, who played uh, Kathy, Kathy <laughs> do a whole show. Hyatt. And there was Jillian Pollock who played the role of Kathy. And uh, so everyone kind of just was like coming together to, and it started to sound really good. And I remember the first rehearsal with everybody there. Right. And it was like, this is going to be like exciting to not only get to perform, which was obvious from the beginning, it's gonna be great to finally do something, but to have a smaller show, it isn't like big bells and whistles, there's mm -hmm. not, you know, we're not flying anybody with any rigging or anything no, like that. There's no big scene, the yeah, no big scene changes. There's, no. uh, it's really simple, and I loved that kind of, the delicacy about it, Me I too. guess is how I would say. Me like, too. I it's my favorite form parts. of theater where where you just let your imagination run with everything. So when we were, um, and it really does fly with what you were saying, when we were trying to figure out how, how to stage it and what the set would be, um, kept working with Keith Smith, who was our set designer on, you know, like, but we need this and we need that, but I don't want it. It can't be anything big. It can't, we can't set up an apartment and a bar and a, right, and so a literal. dock in Ohio. Right. It just can't be literal. It just has to be. So d we had all these ideas and brought all this stuff up to K-High on the day we loaded in. Lori Orlowski, bless her heart, painted a whole bunch of flats. And then we put these boxes on stage with a little silhouette behind the, the mid-stage traveler. And we looked at each other and said, everything that we talked about was great. It was beautiful in drawings. It was, it was but no, we don't need it. What we need are those, those boxes and nothing else and let's work lights. It was really, it was so fun to just allow your imagination to take over everything I like else. that. There's this sense that you have to be literal. And then mm -hmm. there's also the task of trying to do that very well. Right. And I think that it alleviates a lot of responsibility if mm -hmm. you just imply or you just use people's imagination because right. that's what we're doing anyway. And because the show goes, it, it, it literally travels for five years. It's mm -hmm. a relationship between a man and a woman who in the middle of the play get married. Um, but the, the trick of it is that uh, the character of Jamie is telling the story from the beginning of the relationship to the end of the relationship. At the beginning of the play, Kathy is telling her story from the end of the relationship to the beginning of the relationship. Jamie's over and Jamie's gone. Jamie's decided it's time to move on. Jamie has new dreams he's building upon. And I'm So they're literally traveling a, a timeline in opposite directions, right. which we ended up doing staging too. So Kathy's story started stage left and she traveled throughout the play to stage right and Jamie started stage right. They met in the middle, the characters got married and then they switched on, their, on that journey. Right. That they and I was grateful that so with my storyline being literal or linear, mm -hmm. I was grateful that I just had to start at the beginning <laughs> yes. and work my way through the relationship. And that's 
pretty common. If you had a tattoo, that wouldn't matter. If you had a shaved head, that'd be cool. If you came from Spain or Japan or the back of a van, just as long as you're not from Hebrew school, I'd say now I'm getting somewhere. I'm finally breaking through. I'd say, hey, hey, she's a goddess. I've been waiting for someone like you. Right, it's it's easier. Yeah, Jillian had the whole uh, the whole added challenge of starting starting emotionally <laughs> right. in the darkest place where, that you have to work yourself into right. to begin and then lighten that so that by the end she looked five years younger. Right. Um, it was really fascinating. It we was would, a fun project. We would be together backstage and then she would tell me, well, I have to get ready now and mm -hmm. we've got, you know, five to ten minutes before mm -hmm. the curtain opens. So it's like it takes a little bit of time to kind of work yourself into that. So I was grateful I got to start out in a lighter spot. But right. Even as far as memorization goes, that helped me tremendously because yeah. I am a very linear thinker. I'm like, have to go, you know, with the lyrics. Yeah. I am talking with Jillian Pollock, who played Catherine Hyatt in the last five years. So this was really a bit of a, a new experience for you playing a character like Kathy, I think. Yeah. At least for my, for my having worked with you, I think I've mostly cast you as not typecast you <laughs> at all. The villain, we can say <laughs> it. The, the villain. villain. Oh, they're yes. the best roles. They're so yeah. much fun. Yeah. It's just so cool to be able to go so over the top and just have, like, have at it. Yes. No, all, no rules. You just get to play. Yes. And the characters, whether it's a villain or a character role or anything like that, um, like you said, it's big makeup, it's big hair, big costumes, and then come out and do like a big flashy number or two. Mm -hmm. And that is so fun to kind of focus all of your energy into one major place in the show. But yeah, this is like a full on this is a um, whole different experience and an opportunity to play with subtlety, which I haven't had a chance to do before. Well, you have singing I and mean, your mm -hmm. background is really music. Yes. So you that's what you study. That's what your degree is. And you're a teacher. You, you teach elementary students. I have had the pleasure of watching you teach and it's there's there's sometimes you get to watch somebody do what they were just meant to do in life yeah. and that's what it feels like watching you teach you are yeah. so gifted as a teacher at the way you work with kids and inspire them and um, help them find what is what they are capable of and the music within themselves it's just I feel so lucky that we have you here in Ketchikan for that but I feel like personally more lucky that I get to work with you in this whole other this whole other way yeah. which is you know, through First City Players and in fact when you first moved to Ketchikan didn't you yes. come go ahead and tell yes, that story yes. Um, so thank you for saying that because teaching is first and foremost. It is when you say that's what you see, that's what I feel. Mm -hmm. I, it is my p absolute passion and I'm just so grateful to be teaching in this community because um, growing up it was my dream to live in a small town in Alaska teaching music. I thought it was going to be high school choir, um, but when I found out this elementary position was open here at Houtling, um, I took it and was like, well, maybe I'll do it a few years and then move my way up. Um, but I've really found my place in life. And I tell the kids who move away or move on to seventh grade, come back and see me in 20 years when I am like, you know, <laughs> I've aged a bit and I will still hopefully likely be here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, when I first moved here, um, uh, somebody, it was the first couple of days that I was here and they had said, you should check out First City Players. They heard that I love to sing. I was a singer, didn't have a whole lot of theater background, um, but wanted to get involved in the art scene here. And so this person said, go and audition. They just are having uh, Mary Poppins auditions right now. So I called and you guys had already had an auditions and it was callback and you're like, show up tonight. And so <laughs> I was a little panicked about it, but ended up sh uh, just walking in on a whim, auditioned. And um, when the list came out and it said that I was cast as Miss Andrews, Miss Andrews, 
I had no idea who that even was. And so I went home and started looking up YouTube clips and quickly discovered that she poisons children and pulls them by their ears and is basically- The classic Disney villain. This classic <laughs> Disney villain that tortures children. And so I called you up and was like, Elizabeth, I'm a brand new elementary teacher in this town. I don't know how comfortable I am getting up on stage and torturing kids. And I tried to drop out of the I show. I know you did. I remember I was on my way to a soccer game. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and I was sitting on the stairs because I was walking at the time and and you assured me that this is an arti artistic community that knows the difference mm. between a characterization and real life and really assured me that kids were going to know the difference. And they did. And they did. Yeah. yeah and they loved, they loved watching you. Yeah. You were so mean. You were great. Yeah. <laughs> it was really good at being And you got able. to fly. Yeah. And I mean, you know, all the cool things. You so got it all. Yeah. All in your first couple months here in Ketchikan. Right. What was, what was more complicated about mm -hmm. playing Kathy Hyatt than um, playing maybe Ursula or Miss mm -hmm. Andrew? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So with Miss Andrew and Ursula, they again are very characterized over the top big and giant like performance pieces if you will <laughs> um, and coming from a musical background i know how to do that i kind of know how to really ham it up in right. that way um, but again playing on the subtleties and the the role of kathy where um, it's it's more so not to say that villains don't have real emotions um, but they're definitely they're heightened, heightened and characterized mm -hmm. in a bigger, not, I don't know, not an unreal way, but right. in just a larger than life way. So to play it in a real way was new for me in the theater world. Mm -hmm. um, and to get to explore that through song was a really cool adventure because I love music and I love right. to perform in that way. Um, but to explore a character and in its entirety, mm -hmm. instead of just coming out and doing one big song, here's what I think and feel, all condensed in one place, to spread that out and to have more of an arc. I guess I can't believe you really came And that we're sitting on this pier See, I'm smiling That means I'm happy that you're here. I stole this sweater from the costume shop. It makes me look like Daisy May. See, you're laughing. I think we're gonna be okay. In this show, we throw at you not just that you have to do that, but you have to do it backwards. Yeah. Which is not easy for anybody just right. to say. So, I mean, if I were going to really talk the difference between those characters, I mean, anytime you play any role, mm -hmm. you have to find an honesty. You have to find something that the emotion can can resonate with you. You Otherwise, it is caricature, right. and caricature can be fun, yeah. but it's more fun if you find something that, that is actually not realistic, but that you can find an emotion you can connect with. Right. So even when you're poisoning children or yeah. um, you know, taking away the mermaid's voice, you have to find something in there that's real. But for Kathy, and this was, I, I was really fun to work this process with you. You had to find emotions that um, weren't so enormous for mm -hmm. one thing. The, the whole arc of the character is it's not, there are emotions that all of us feel. We feel them every day, but they're not, you know, like epic novel worthy. Well, they are, I guess, but they're not epic yeah. no novel worthy emotions. Right. We're not dealing with war or um, it's not some huge epic story. Right. It's a very common story that most of us live in one way or another about being in love and losing. Yes, and to play on that, a lot of the other bigger showy villain, if we're calling using those words, pieces 
we're singing to someone mm -hmm. or exclaiming something to a large group mm -hmm. with Ursula, uh, with, with all of those. But a lot of the songs in the last five years, Kathy was singing to herself right. in these moments of introspection. and Or singing to um, Jamie, who was not there. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. he was there in her head yeah. or in the real moment, but the way it's staged, yeah. there is no other actor there for you to relate to, right. which was one of the challenges in the show is to be able to, well, from staging it, mm -hmm. how do you stage that so the audience understands it? Right. And also, how do you as an actor find the truth of those moments? Because some of your biggest songs, um, right at the very beginning, well, the first, the first song you sing at the beginning of the show is you singing, is Kathy singing her own emotion as she reads and discovers that Jamie has left. Right. But then the second song you sing is a conversation with him mm -hmm. when you are at this uh, summer stock theater in Ohio. He's not there. He's in his, you know, like you know, five years earlier world. Yeah. Um, and but but you, how did you create the truth of him being there for yourself? Um, I mean, it was even there in the beginning song as well. In I'm still hurting mm -hmm. um, to place him in a place. I mean, not only blocking wise, mm -hmm. um, but also to just literally envision that he is there with me. And yeah. even in the songs where I'm portraying that I'm singing to myself, in those moments, that's what we do anyways. Mm -hmm. When we're sitting to ourselves and we're experiencing a loss, we are sitting with that person also. Um, so to just practice that on the stage yeah. too was a powerful experience. When you come home to me, I'll wear a sweeter smile and hope Yeah, and yeah, it's, it, it's one of the things that I love about this show is that you have to find that way that you can um, really connect the reality of an emotion that you feel when you're all alone yeah. that involves another person. Mm -hmm. I was really impressed with just everything that you did and how you did it with that show. I am so excited that we were able to perform it here right. at Catch Can. Yes. I'm so excited that we will be able to stream it so people who weren't able to come out and see it will yeah. be able to have a chance to see the magic that you did. It's never the same on film than it is in right. real life. And the magic that we did, because yeah. I'm so grateful that you thought of this idea and decided to bring us in and that together this little community is making moves and making things We're happen. We're doing it. Yeah. We're finding a way to make theater happen. We we laugh at the office. We're doing COVID theater. Yeah. Um, and it's different. It's not the same mm -hmm. as what we're all used to. We don't can't pack in the house. We can't have all the all the bells and whistles and you know, huge set changes and all the, yeah. the all, we can't fly people. But as far as the core, the essence of what theater is, telling human stories mm -hmm. together and being able to share in those emotions. That is what we are still doing. So yeah. we'll see you at the theater the next time we're there. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jillian. I mean, overall, it was such a great experience. And like yeah. I said before, uh, when I was talking with the cast and, and everyone involved, it's like, it's so great that we had the chance to kind of, even just for a minute, have a sense of normalcy. Right. and be able to do a show again. And that was one of the things that audience members kept telling me. They were so, so, so happy that we have found a way to make the space itself feel safe for them. And we're, we're pretty rigorous. We're, we, we're not taking it lightly. So right. you know, we really keep the numbers down. We do the temperature checks. We escort you to your seats. We, we release audience row by row. We don't let you hang out in the commons. I just, I don't want to have a super spreader event. I want to keep being able to do theater. Right. And so the only way I know how to do that is to make theater as safe as it can be, given yeah. the circumstances that we have. But every single person that I talked to um, who came to see the show 
one of the things that they were most grateful for, loving the show, all of the things that were wonderful about that, but what you just said, just that sense of being able to do something that felt normal again. Yeah. And so, yeah. Well, hopefully, you know, the video captures some of that right. essence of I'll what it's like to have that live event yeah. and hopefully they enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. That's, the, uh, that's the other thing, just to see how that will be, how it's gonna pan out doing a streaming event, never done one. We have to figure it out. Maybe. Well, this has been Behind the Curtain. My name is Elizabeth Nelson, and I'm here with Kyle G. Bailey. And thank you for joining us.